G'day, how you going? Uh, welcome to Bootlosophy, and if you're new here, my name is Tech. I'd like to uh, acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands that I work on, uh, the Wajit people. Now, I'm really excited today. I, I went to the post office in the freezing cold of a Perth morning. I think it was like four degrees this morning, it felt like two, uh, which is very cold for us. But it's appropriate because the box I collected came from uh, Wisconsin which my understanding is pretty cold. I, my American geography is not great, but I think it's on the Great Lakes uh, near the Canadian border. Uh, those of you who are American will know this better than me, but I'm very excited because this is from uh, Russell Moccasin. And Russell Moccasin is famous for making uh, real moccasin construction shoes and boots. So uh, I'm really uh, excited to open and, and check out my first impressions of uh, this first pair of Russell, Russell moccasin boots that I've, I've ever handled. Uh, and there's not many because um, I, I haven't seen it that often on social media. But um, I'm really excited. Uh, I want to see what it's like. It has a, a long history. Uh, so let's get into it. Let's open the box. Um, I'm always a bit cautious opening these things because this knife is so sharp and I'm concerned about losing a few fingers. <laughs> so here we go. Uh, plain shipping box. Let's see what's inside. Okay, fantastic. No waste of material. There's no actual boot box. So the shipping box is the boot box. Uh, shipping notice. And the boots come wrapped up. Before I open them, I've noticed some swag, a sticker. Always welcome. So I'll have that, thank you. So the boots are wrapped, wow. Just handling them, uh, they are exceptionally light uh, compared to uh, Goodyear welted boots that um, I usually handle. So let's open this up. Oh, very nice, very nice. So as you can see, a moccasin toe, but in this case, a real moccasin construction boot. Uh, and I'll tell you a little bit about it in a minute, uh, as far as I know. I haven't researched this fully, which I will do, and I bring it to you in a couple of months' time after I've worn it a little while. Uh, so this is from Russell Moccasin, based in Berlin, Wisconsin. As I said, my, my, uh, my uh, American geography is not great, but I understand uh, it's a state north of Chicago, which I did spend a bit of time with when I was with Arthur Anderson. Uh, I spent a bit of time in Chicago. Uh, on the Great Lakes, interesting, when I uh, think of moccasin construction shoes and boots, I think of East Coast America, New England. Uh, but clearly Wisconsin has a good tradition because this is a 120 plus year old company. Um, moccasin construction means it's actually blasted from the bottom up. With most of the boots that I've handled, they were blasted from the top down, nailed onto the last, and then bottomed. In this case, they're um, lasted from bottom up. A real uh, vamp piece is then sewn on with a real moccasin stitch. Uh, and then the uh, midsole and outsole are uh, sewn on to the bottom of the, the full leather. Now, the reason why it still remains waterproof is because, yep, this is a double vamp boot, meaning there is a full piece of leather that's pushed inside like a sock. And the stitch holes on that in, inner piece of leather are different from the outside. And so the no two stitch holes uh, uh, ever go through applies as well. You can see from this, that top piece of leather is actually uh, pulled over this sidewall and then stitched here. So it creates extra water resistance rather than two halves being butt, uh, butt stitched to the top there, like on, um, like on uh, red wing mock toes. I'm, I'm looking at that stitch, it's clearly a hand stitch really lovely looking. Reinforced in all the right places. 
So you have a, a, a piece of leather here that's been lasted up, as I said. A uh, piece of leather sewn on, uh, rather than being butt stitched, is rolled over. A uh, single piece backstay that curves into a, into a loop. Uh, brass speed hooks and eyelets. A gusseted tongue. I suppose you might call that three-quarter gusseted because it goes up to there. Uh, the speed hooks are pressed into the back. The eyelets are washered. Uh, there is a label and markings, the size markings, sewn onto the tongue. The leather feels oil tanned. Um, it's very waxy, very heavily waxed, very heavily oiled. I don't know what type of leather this is, so as I say, I'll do a bit of research before I bring it back to you in a couple of months' time. Uh, but it does feel uh, extremely sturdy, very supple, you know, extremely supple, as, as oil tanned leathers do tend to be. Um, but it's very waxy. Leather midsole, from what I can see, and then stitched through the outside edge of that midsole is the outsole. Oh, is there? No, I think it's stitched through to a, uh, a rubber slip sole, and then the sole is probably glued on to, but for the better adhesive qualities. Uh, V-Room Commander sole, recognisable by everybody. Slightly softer compound, so I don't know what, what sort of model that is. Stitching everywhere looks good. Uh, this is a highly water resistant boot. Oh look, I love that. The edges of that uh, rolled over part is pinked. So it does create a little bit of fashionable look. The pull loop is thank goodness nice and beefy and proper and you can actually put your finger in it. Uh, the stitching looks very precise, no problems with that, and I'm very impressed by that hand stitch. Let's take a look at the other boot. There are no laces, so I'm assuming the laces are stuffed in there somewhere. Oh no, wait, something else. Here we go, I love stickers. <laughs> Let's move the box. Take a look at the other boot. I mean, I think the finish is just as good. These are ready to wear boots. They, you, you, you can custom make them, uh, particularly uh, those if you, if you want to measure your feet properly and size them, they will custom make them for you. Uh, but I got these ready to wear. Uh, I'm impressed with this leather. It's very waxy, very oily and very supple with some great pull-up effect. And again, the hand stitching on that mock toe and the rolled over piece of leather is just clean, precise, consistent. The stitching on the welt is very precise. That's a slab of veg 10 leather, you can tell. Um, very tightly sewn, so there's no, no uh, seepage of water possible through that. Uh, this was used by, I believe his name was Earl Schaefer, uh, in the 1940s, the first man to walk the entire Appalachian Trail from somewhere in Georgia to somewhere in uh, Maine, I think, which if you um, know is a really long way, a couple of thousand miles, I believe. Uh, and he wore this boot throughout the entire walk. So that surely says something about the comfort and construction of these boots. As I said, it's a double vamp, meaning there are two um, pieces of leather that make up the whole boot. The first part is the one that's curled uh, up from under the last, and the second one is one that slips inside. And uh, the stitching of the sole on the outer vamp is through the, through the vamp through the uh, uh, vamp piece and the inner vamp has stitches that's up here somewhere so that uh, it, it forms a, an old-fashioned Gore-Tex layer if you like. Shaft is unlined um, but the whole vamp piece which is this whole piece here has that 
second vamp on the inside and hello I found the laces uh, Taslon laces by the feel of them very nice and maybe that's great for waterproofness uh, but I might change these into leather laces so I'm I like this I'm very impressed I, I understand the comfort is is legendary um, and they, they do feel oh wow they do feel nice and soft inside without any I understand foam padding so let's get them on feet we'll get them on feet uh, and see how I like them okay here we go the first uh, try on of these boots nice nice fit now I'll just tighten up these laces now my understanding of um, this gusseted tongue is you f you kind of s fold it similar to uh, PNW boots but I'm finding that difficult because of the label I think perhaps what I'll do is infold it there so it tucks in underneath a bit like my MP boots yeah okay we'll have to learn to uh, train that tongue in time uh, my immediate feel is uh, comfortable around the top of my foot these are size 8 the advice is to go down oh no hang on these are what are they these are yes they're size 8 D's uh, I was advised to go down half size like most heritage boots I get confused sometimes because of this go true to size business. Yes, yeah, slipping them in is, is really nice. You get that very satisfying plop as you put your uh, heel in place and it feels locked in. It really does. Uh, which is not often the case with many new boots because the heel is often uh, a little too wide, shall we say? Yeah, look, I think I'm definitely going to have to try and train this into an S uh, fold when I have a bit more time and not you peeking over my shoulder or in front of me. Um, laces are long enough to go all the way around the shaft, I think. So this is just a quick try on. Uh, immediate impression, very comfortable over the foot. Um, this being hand sewn is perhaps a little not symmetrical but you know it's a handcrafted boot why why would you expect machine symmetry um, I, I'm clearly feeling that they need to be tightened properly in the early eyelets and then I need to sort that tongue out but nevertheless I feel it extremely snug across the whole forefoot um, and when I say extremely snug I mean that proverbial firm handshake. It's not tight. Uh, I, I, it's, it's very impressive how it fits across the forefoot. The heel, I feel, is locked in. There is a bit of space under the arch. Uh, to me, we're, we're, I'm slightly flat-footed. To me, I think perhaps I would like a little bit more arch support. We can see what we can do about that later. Standing in them, uh, it, it's very comfortable. I, you, can, you can feel that there isn't that hard-edged insole you get in Goodyear boots where uh, for something as, as form-fitting as this, you might sometimes, like in my Iron Rangers, feel the edges of that thick veg tan insole. With these, because the leather is curved upwards, uh, double leather, uh, it's it, it, it cups my feet very nice again I think because I'm I'm ever so slightly flat-footed I wouldn't mind a little bit more arch support is my first impression but maybe as everything settles down and the weight of my body kind of pushes everything down and it settles in that might be a little bit better the uh, leather let me have a quick look the leather is and I'll quote, made from water-resistant full-grain walnut timberjack leather. So I've never heard of timberjack leather. Uh, it's full-grain and being water-resistant, my guess is right, it's heavily waxed and oiled in the tannage, I suspect. Yeah, 
definitely comfortable. Um, I don't get a lot of heel slip and I feel that whatever I have might be helped by me uh, cinching up the laces a bit more and getting those tongues right, uh, being a, being a uh, gusseted tongue. And walking into that chair was not the fault of the boots. I am slightly uh, clumsy <laughs> by, by not looking down at my feet as I'm wandering around. <laughs> um, yeah, I like them. I like them. Uh, I'm going to wear them around for a bit, definitely. Uh, next few days, just get them used to my feet, see what they're like under my arch. Uh, the immediate comfort around the forefoot, both top and bottom, I'm very impressed with. So there you go, uh, my very first pair of real moccasin construction boots. Um, this beats your bedroom slipper, I can tell you. <laughs> they feel fantastic on my feet. Uh, they are remarkably light uh, for what they are. Um, I'll weigh them in my uh, full review and, and uh, compare them to some of the other boots. Uh, they have an extremely uh, how can I how can I say it like a like a Pacific Northwest feel to them when they're on your feet, and uh, you know it, it it is a hundred and twenty something year old company, so you'd expect those sort of traditions to come through. Uh, yeah, look, I I really like them. Uh, I'm going to really put them on and put them on their paces because it is winter for us at the moment, and although we've had an Indian summer, it's suddenly become quite a cold and wet winter. So there's plenty of, a, of opportunity to wear these uh, on my weekend hikes and uh, we'll see how they fare on the, in, the, in the very short mileage that I do compared to Earl Schaeffer. <laughs> but um, I'll bring the, the uh, truth back to you when I do a long-term review. So I hope you liked your little exposure to uh, Russell Moccasin's uh, backcountry boots. Uh, they look great. They feel great. I love this leather. Uh, I love the weight of it. It's, it's going to be a, a protective boot, uh, obviously, from the makeup. Uh, don't forget to click on like down below. That really helps me out. And if you're not subscribed, I have no idea why you're not. If you're a boot fanatic, subscribe because I'm going to bring you plenty more boots to go week by week. So until then, guys, you take care out there and I shall see you soon.